Welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith With, an audio interview series presented by WFPK Independent Louisville. Today my guest is Mark Spiropoulos of the Sistine Chapel Choir. You might know it as the Pope's Choir. They've been around for 1,500 years and they're doing their first U.S. coast-to-coast tour behind some of their most recent recordings. I got to talk to Mark about what it's like being the very first British member of the Sistine Chapel Choir, as well as their concentration on the Renaissance period of music and finding some lost pieces. And of course, we talk about meeting the Pope and what it's like working with a Pope who's known for being so progressive. It's Kyle Meredith with the Sistine Chapel Choir. Kyle, good morning. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Very good. So the Sistine Chapel Choir, you're doing your first U.S. tour in the, in the history, and uh, I think, um, you know, this is... It's, it's our first, it's our biggest U.S. tour. Oh, okay. It's not quite the first, it's our first coast-to-coast U.S. tour. That's still something pretty, uh, pretty landmark and, uh, and and noteworthy, right there. Uh, especially yeah. if, because this is one of those choirs. You know, I mean, anything associated uh, with with I guess the Pope. There's still so much uh, mystery, uh, I think, to it. And, and when you've got something like this, like the choir itself has been around for 1,500 years. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, 1,500 I'm, years. I'm guessing there's no original members at this point, though. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> So what brought on this tour uh, in, in this magnitude? Why now? Uh, well, the, the Sistine Choir, of course, as you say, has been going for 1,500 years. Um, and I think now is the right time because in recent years we've made now four discs with Deutsche Grammophon. And the, the Sistine Choir is, is really excited to share the music that we, we, that we sing for regularly, day in, day out for the Pope, with a broader audience. And uh, the Vatican is very keen that we should send out this, this extraordinary culture that we are um, very fortunate to be a part of uh, to Catholics and anybody worldwide. Yeah, and, and, and what I gather, um, where the choir is right now, uh, as I read the press release, somebody just read the quote here, the cutting edge research and study of Renaissance music. This is, yes. that's, that's the focus, right? Renaissance? Yes, because the, 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 the Renaissance is um, the time in which in the Sistine Chapel of the Vatican, there is this extraordinary flowering of art and music. It really is this incredible time of creativity. That's why the, that's why the 16th century is so important. And you can see it in the art. So everybody knows the great frescoes of Michelangelo, the fingers of Adam and God coming together. This is the music contemporary with that. Yeah. And we have great composers, Palestrina, Lasso, Victoria, and Allegri, um, who wrote at that time, writing some of the most ex- just beautiful and uh, spiritual music. And what we're going to be hearing on the uh, on the tour here is is the music from these last few releases that you put out. That's right. So some of the best music from uh, from our last recordings. And some of this music, you know, some of it's very famous, uh, has, is sung by uh, you know, choirs across the world. But some of it has not been heard for hundreds of years. The Vatican archives, as you say, we talk about mystery. There is huge mystery in these archives. Some of this music has been sitting there collecting dust for centuries. And Maestro Palambella, he's a kind of uh, like an Indiana Jones of Renaissance music. You know, he goes into the Vatican archives, finds this stuff, it's all covered in dust, and makes these his, his new additions from it, because, of course, he is the maestro of the Sistine Chapel, but he's the only person who has full 100% access to this music. So he has the access and the time at which he puts a great use to, to uh, revive this really uh, astonishing tradition. I mean, this lost music, well, not lost anymore, but, you know, seemingly lost for so long. Was there anything that you personally were surprised to find in it, something that you didn't quite expect in the music? Yes, well, I mean, there's a piece, the, the Allegri Miserere, which uh, for anybody who knows a little bit about choral music knows this is a piece that sort of uh, has an absolute mystique about it. Um, and it, it went through uh, various different um, concepts while well, the, 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 the Castrati sang it for hundreds of years and, and then Mozart heard it and nobody was allowed to copy it out of the Sistine Chapel. It was only ever sung once a, once a year and then young Mozart came and heard it when he was 14 and wrote it all out from memory. Then that piece went around Europe and went into various different guises and, and was recorded for the first time about 100 years ago. But what Maestro Palombella did is to find the original, the earliest edition of this that we have from 1660. With Allegri's own hand on it, and we sing that. We sing what the the, the original notes that were written that uh-huh. were written from the uh, early uh, 17th century. So, you know, it, it's things like that. You know, this is a, a very famous piece of music which had been which had gone through so many different interpretations. We went right back to the beginning and found what it really was. And this is a piece that I've been very familiar with growing up as a young uh, choral singer. But then to to come back and rediscover this piece and its original. 
uh, fantastic. But that's that's one example. Yeah, I'm right. Singing that in our concert, the yeah. Allegri Miserere. That is amazing. It's just amazing to have that kind of access right there. And it's like finding one of those. I don't. As you're saying, it's like it's like finding an old recipe almost. You know, yeah. hundreds of year old. <laughs> yeah. Something you thought you knew what it tasted like, and here's the original version. It it's, really is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the background good. on you, by the way, we, we should bring this up. Uh, you, you come from London. Uh, you, you've got yeah. a pretty amazing resume. You're, do I get this right? You're the first ever Brit in, in the Sistine Chapel Choir? And, uh, and, well, yes, as far as we know. I mean, um, certainly since the Reformation, we don't know of any British singers. It's very unlikely any British singers would have gone over since the Reformation. It's possible there was one before, although we don't have any record. Um, there were some singers that came from all across Europe. But uh, as, as far as we know, I'm the first British uh, member of the Sistine Chapel Choir, yes. That's amazing. That's, I mean, that's got to that's gotta feel pretty heavy right there. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. It, it, it was certainly when I first started, it was, it was uh, I think, surreal is really the only word I can right. uh, use for that. And you've got, a, I mean, you've got a really great resume leading up to this, but I wonder, you know, to land something like this, is, is this the big time? Is, is this like where, where, you know, a choral singer would want to get to, or, is, or would you say this is a stop on the line? Uh, who knows? Perhaps I'll only know that in retrospect. All I can say is it's, uh, it's an amazing experience. It really is something quite extraordinary. And, I, and I'm very lucky, of course, to be a member of this choir, but to be a member of this choir at this time, as it, uh, you know, in the, in the 20th century, the, the choir had kind of got itself into a bit of a rut. Um, and then in the last sort of 10 years, in, with Maestro Palombella, it has, it has completely renewed itself to become a, a fantastic force in, in, in choral music and particularly in Renaissance music, to really uh, and, and, and confidently express, I, I suppose, the Catholic Church at its most beautiful. I think that's how I see it. And I, I know it's, from what I understand, pretty competitive to get into this, too. I mean, this is sort of like the all-star team for, for choral singers, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you could say that. It's, um, there are a lot of people who would obviously would love to be a member of this choir, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm very lucky. I, uh, I, you know, I come from England, and we have a great choral tradition in England. And I, I've sung in Catholic and Anglican choirs in England. And I think, uh, you know, Maestro Palombella wanted, I think, a little bit of that ingredient, or the, a bit of a bit of the sort of the choral, the, the discipline of the English choral music. Um, the, the Italians are, are fantastic at being. Uh, expressive and they have such uh, an instinctive connection with this music um but you know we brits we can be we can be quite disciplined um and perhaps <laughs> perhaps that's uh, the ingredient that he wanted in the choir there, there are some definite stereotypes at play right no, there. absolute <laughs> total stereotypes there and i hope no italians are too offended <laughs> so i've got to ask some of the questions i'm sure you get asked all the time you get do you sure. get to meet the pope I have met the Pope. I didn't uh, get much of a chance to talk to him, but um, if I've met the Pope uh, in a couple of lineups, I uh, met him three times. The first time I met him was in my second week, um, and uh, that was kind of mind-blowing, you know. It was in the morning of, a, of my first papal mass, um, which is in St. Peter's, which if anybody who's been to papal mass knows is, is an, ex <laughs> an amazing event. Right. Thousands and thousands of people broadcast live across the world. Uh, and it was just before that, and I was told to, to line up in front of the Michelangelo Pietà, the most beautiful sculpture. And I didn't quite know what was happening. And then, you know, himself appeared. And I was the first person in the lineup. And, you know, I've, I've never met a pope before. I don't know how to do it. Um, and he, 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 and the maestro came along and then and introduced Holy Father. This is Mark Theropolis, a singer from London. And the, the Pope Father said to me, hey, you are from London. Uh, I said, yes, Holy Father. Um, he said, uh, he said, this is wonderful. You know, hey, welcome to the Vatican. It's so happy you are singing here with us. It was like, <laughs> like somebody in, in, you know, inviting me into their home almost. You're, yeah. you're here with us. You're, you know, you're working with us. That, that's great. Welcome to the Vatican. <laughs> and just uh, I, right, right there at ease. Like, here you are. Right there at ease. I really understood, you know, this, this amazing personality that she's so famous for having. It, 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 was, it came across very strongly. Very yeah. impressed. Yeah, the, you know, this pope, you know, he, he's sort of known as uh, one of the more progressive popes uh, than what we've known yeah. in, in the past. I, I wonder, does that affect the choir in any way, that, that sort of sense and direction? Oh, yeah. Yeah, very much so. Because um, Pope Francis has, has called for practical ecumenism. And our response to that is that we can, uh, we can take this, this beautiful Catholic tradition and we can sing with other choirs from other Christian denominations. So we have sung now with uh, many Anglican choirs uh, in London and uh, here in, in New York. We sung with St. Thomas's Fifth Avenue. Um, also Lutheran choirs. We sang in Wittenberg. Uh, we've had uh, several choirs from Germany and uh, Stockholm and also uh, the, the Moscow Patriarch Choir. 
because when we sing together, we can express our closeness, our, our real understanding of, of the faith from where we come from. And we can focus on what we, we, we understand and what we uh, appreciate about each other rather than always focusing on the difference. No, I mean, and, and to be an artist, you know, in just the basic sense, I mean, sharing and collaboration is everything. So to be able to open it, that up. It, absolutely. And of course, as you say, it's, it's a cultural exchange as well. And, I, and that, for me, is, is, is such a wonderful thing to be a part of. You know, yeah. it, it, the, the, the Anglicans or, or Russians or um, uh, Lutherans can, can sing together and we understand a common language there. Yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful sentiment. Um, I, I will kind of wrap up here by asking, you know, um, Pope Francis did put out a record a few years ago. It was a prog rock record. Have you heard it? <laughs> um, no, it's not really my speciality, I've got to say. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm more about the 16th century uh, right. myself. Right. But I'm sure it's fantastic, and I'll make sure I get a copy immediately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it exists. It's out there. I don't think it's going anywhere. <laughs> But uh, maybe maybe one day, you know, th there'll be a great collaboration in that sense. I, I, I feel like that's the way to step. go. I don't know. Maybe that's why I'm going after this. Um. <laughs> well, Mark, it really has been a pleasure talking to you. Um, enjoy this tour, this U.S. tour. That, uh, that, like I said, I know this is a, a really, really big deal. And uh, we're so honored to have you over here in the country. Thank you very much. I should just say, I know that you, we, don't, we don't do one in Ken Kentucky, but um, our closest St. Louis concert to where is St. Louis and uh, and Chicago. Is Chicago close? We're, we're centrally located. That's the nice thing about Kentucky. It's everything is just around us. So you got options. We got options. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, definitely the St. Louis one is the closest one, and uh, and uh, we'll look to see you out there. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. All right. Thank you, Mark. Have a great one. Take care. Okay. Bye. 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 Thanks so much to Mark Spiropoulos from the Sistine Chapel Choir for giving me the call today. Again, they're heading out on their first coast-to-coast -coast U.S. tour, which you can find out about at SistineChapelChoirTour.com. Make sure to head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show every Monday through Thursday from noon to 3 Eastern. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.